You can call us to order, George. I know. I, I don't think we should start before. I don't think we can. Well, we can start before 9.30. I'm not sure we should start. No, we cannot. Given how powerful this committee is, we can do whatever we want. Exactly. Right. <laughs> exactly. So let's think what we could do. <laughs> Athena's clock says 9.34 or something. Oh, my <laughs> God. So much for computer the boss. time. I thought computer time was, uh, was sacrosanct. Let us begin. Let's start. So we are recording. Excellent. Yes, sir. I see the presence of a quorum. And so I'm going to call this meeting of GOL to order. It is, depending on your computer clock, either 930, 934, maybe even be 929 in some places. But consensus is it's 930. So we're going to uh, call this, I'm going to call this meeting to order. Uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, this meeting of GOL is being conducted via remote participation. And I'm going to take a moment and, and we are being recorded. Um, and I'm gonna take a moment and just make sure everybody can be heard. So Mandy. Present. And Andy. Present. And Pat. Present. And Lynn. Present. All right. George Ryan. He's, unfortunately he's here. So there's nothing we can do about that. Um, we have a very full agenda as I'm sure you're aware. Um, and I'm going to pretty much follow the order of the agenda. I will be keeping my eyes on uh, items not anticipated because we do have one resolution that has been sent to us. And so it's important that we, I would think at least 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes um, devoted to that. Um, so at some point we may have to break the agenda line and go directly to that. Uh, we're aiming at a hard 1130 stop, um, both because that's when we should stop. And also because today, of course, is the inauguration. A number of us would like to uh, witness the events. So I'm also going to delete from the agenda unless there's an objection, which you're certainly free to raise. Uh, I'm going to delete item number five, which is the review and discussion of the I'm sorry, uh, item number uh, six, which is the review of the timeline for the town manager goals and evaluation. I don't think we're gonna have time for that. Um, now, if we really zoom along, I may change my mind, but uh, is there any objection to deleting that if we have to? The moment, I don't think we have time to get to the timeline. As long and, as we put it on a very near future meeting. Yes, and, and so it would be one of the items, if we don't get it to today, it would be on the items for uh, next meeting, um, of which I have already a couple. <laughs> All right, so I wanna start with the, uh, the review of the rules of procedure. We made very good progress last time. We made a couple of changes and that document uh, Lynn uh, sent kindly to me and it's in the packet. Um, and it is uh, Council Rules of Procedure Revised 2020. Um, and I'm just gonna quickly remind us of what we did. Um, we made a slight change to the uh, Rule 6.3D, um, basically saying that a member may speak without recognition to call the previous question. And uh, we've also asked the president, this is not um, a change to the text, but we've asked the president to more strictly enforce the rules which govern how a long a counselor may speak. And then in 6.3e, we lowered the length of, we uh, changed the number three to two minutes um, for the time that a counselor may speak. And we also asked, I believe this is correct, but please correct me if I'm mistaken. Um, we asked that a clock be uh, reintroduced into the meeting if that's possible, such as one was present when we met in the council room. Um, those are my um, understandings of our last. And also thank you, uh, note taker, because I was able to use the minutes and that was helpful to me as well to check against my notes. But that's what I recall. Anything that anyone, so that's what I recall changes we've made. Mm -hmm. We discussed deleting 8.2F and the equivalent paragraph in 8.6 and we ultimately did decided not to do that. Um, and uh, we also decided not to delete 8.4, which requires two readings of most measures. Is that everyone? Yeah, Lynn? Clarify two things. First yep. of all, the section on um, that we're looking at right now, 
we agreed that I will be sharing this with the council either today or tomorrow in prior to the next meeting without the changes. Is that correct? You'll be sharing, I'm sorry, what? Sharing? This section 6.3 with the the council yeah. members prior to the meeting on the 25th, but right. it will not have the changes as they are appear here. And the point of sharing that is simply to alert them to your desire to uh, better or to, to enforce the rules about speaking. Is that the point? That's yeah. correct. In addition to that, I have explored the issue of a clock and we uh, and Sean is exploring various options so that we will have either the ability for counselors to individually look at a clock that they can pull up on Zoom or we'll have a clock that is shown on Zoom on Monday the 25th. Good, excellent. Okay. Okay. Um, Mandy Jo has her hand up. Mandy, please, thank you. Um, I, I was just wondering, I, I have two more requested changes as I reviewed the rules um, or, or not necessarily changes, but thoughts. Um, I don't know when you want them mentioned. Uh, the next item on my very detailed uh, notes here is any further discussion of uh, any further new items. We uh, First of all, any further discussion of the matters we've just discussed. And it seems like other than Lynn's comment, there is no further discussion and that's people's understanding of where we stand at the moment. Then yes, the next item I have here is any new items. And so Mandy, please go ahead. Just, just two, um, I'll start with the one that might be a little quicker, um, 4.3. Section 4.3. It's the additional public comment and it's it has the word shall in it. And in the Zoom era and other times we've we've struggled with this shall and with the separate public comment. So I wondered if we wanted to just change it to May. Um, okay. Let's take a moment and look at 4.3. I will read it. When presentations, discussions, or major action items appear on the agenda for the first time. The president or presiding officer shall include additional public comment sessions specific to the issue. The suggestion is to change that to may include. So I I'm giving obviously totally yeah. support that. So Lynn, okay. Good. Any other thoughts? This gives obviously some discretion to the presiding officer. Um, I don't have a problem with it. Okay, with it uh, if it's. If it seems like it is unfairly limiting public comment, then we can say that to the president and have it change, you know, as, as because it's a May. The May gives us flexibility, I guess I'm saying. Are you suggesting that someone on, on the council could, could say, uh, you know, uh, Madam President, uh, I think we should have public comment. In other words, we have a debate about it or? No, or I'm saying, uh, no. I'm saying, okay, here's the way I thought about it. One, it, it should be changed to May, but I want us to be, um, if, if there's a consistent lack of public comment directed to an issue when it's brought up, right. which I don't think is gonna happen, but if it right. does, yeah. then I would like to be able to then say to the president, either in a meeting or privately, uh, we need to bring it back. It's a May. It's flexible. Let's make sure people have um, the opportunity to speak. I don't know. Mandy, could you speak for a second to um, the purpose behind this? Um, I think I have a pretty good idea, but just yeah. briefly. Yeah, I mean, my, my thoughts are to try and, in some sense, get the rules reflective of what we're doing, and a shall is not what we're doing, and we've, right. we, we were doing the shall, and it's not that I don't support the shall. We found, at least in the Zoom era, but also in the non-Zoom era, that public got very confused <laughs> about separate um, speaking times and not. And so we've gone back and forth. So more, it's it's not necessarily to say we should never have these separate ones. It's more of we've run into problems. We're not doing the shall. So let's just make the rules reflect what we're doing and trying to do, which is figure out a way to run it as of the May um, while also not confusing the public. <laughs> Andy. 
Yeah, I, I think that uh, I agree with the change. Uh, there's several points of vagueness in the rule as it is, which I don't think we should change. But we, what is the definition of a major action item and uh, is another one. And I think that you get into confusions then is, to, is it a major action item? Is it the first time it's coming up that we usually know, but the public doesn't always know. And uh, the uh, word shall then sort of makes everybody think that there might be a separate set of public comment on an issue that they're thinking about, which is not the intent. And the president's usually been very good about, uh, actually always been very good about saying when it's anticipated, but um, as, as Mandy says, it brings it into conformance. So it, it brings it into conformance with our actual practice. That That's one reason and the main reason. Um, it's not to save time necessarily. I mean, or is that that okay? And actually, it it saves enormous time to have public comment once. Well, that's that's my thought. Um, yep. Uh, let me express my thought, that's and then not the reason I'm proposing pass. this though. Um, it's more of a logistical matter, and to bring us into conformance with what we do at this okay. point. Okay. I'm wondering what the yeah I'm wondering what the practice of other councils is in regard to this. Um, it seems like we go to I would say the far end of the spectrum. Um, my understanding is that there must be time for public comment, and that is often placed at the beginning of a meeting like ours. And at that point, we then turn to our business. Um, but we do not do that. We uh, will stop at certain points as we are doing our business after we've had general public comment and um, provide for public comment on specific um, items. Um, is this the general practice? Is, does that even, maybe that doesn't even matter. Um, I think Mandy Jo can speak to this. I'd like her to make sure we refer to what the charter says. Okay, please, Mandy. So I, I would say I actually served on a panel last night for the Watertown Charter Review Commission um, talking oh. about councils and manager systems. Um, so I was privy to Watertown. We, there was a lot of conversation about public comment and public participation. So there were four, three other counselors there from towns that had mayors because they were talking about more of the system of government, but none of them had multiple public comments during sections during their meetings. It was all at the beginning and all. And so what we do goes beyond what typical uh, councils do do if we do provide for multiple public comment sessions during a meeting. That's not to say I'm against it. I actually do like that. Um, it's just from this point of view, and the charter doesn't require the multiple comment sections. The charter just requires at a regular meeting to have one public comment period. Um, I still support the section and having the separate ones. I just don't like the fact that we have rules we don't follow. Yeah. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and so if we're not going to follow it. And one of the reasons we haven't been following it is particularly on Zoom, it has been very confusing to people of can you talk here and there and what can you say at this one and what can you say at that one? It's been harder to manage on an online system than it has been in a public system, in sort of right. an in-person system. And so so it's not that I, I don't support having them. It's It's more of we're in a new world and and we haven't been doing it. And so let's give our president um, the flexibility that in theory didn't exist before. Can I uh, also ask another clarifying question, Mindy Jo? Uh, is public comment required by state law? I have no idea. I think so, maybe. The reason I'm asking this is because I've been engaged in a discussion very recently, particularly with regard to the school committee and the fact that they don't do live public comment, they only do written public comment. And in that conversation, which also at one point included talking with Paul, I got the impression that some councils don't even do public comment. I'm going, you're kidding. So I, I mean, I hope to support public comment. Required. I do know the governor's order um, for the Zoom era did give more leeway as to what public comment looks like than okay. typically have done. 
Now that's a question we can look into. Pat, you have your hand raised. Yeah, I, I agree that things are slightly different with Zoom. I'm very concerned that um, residents have a chance after a presentation or after a discussion to make public comment. Um, sometimes the issue may be fresh for the people who are watching it. And I, uh, and I think that's important to have the flexibility. I also would hate to see uh, public comment only be written. And I think it would be a giant mistake. I, I agree totally. I, I just to be very sure, Pat, I'm not suggesting that. I was yeah. astounded. Okay, I'm just, that's fine. <laughs> well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a little push back briefly and then I think we need to move on. Um, I'm very concerned about the length of our meetings and we haven't had much progress uh, in that regard. And there are many reasons and causes. Um, but uh, our meetings are basically designed for us to get our work done. Um, the citizens of our town have many, many ways in which they can reach us. We have all kinds of avenues for people. We also, I think, have agreed that any major measure requires at least two uh, formal meetings of the council. So um, uh, I guess I have a little, I, I certainly am not against public comment, and I think so far it's actually worked fairly well, but it does uh, create, uh, for any given meeting, depending on the item that we're dealing with, it could turn a, a four-hour meeting into a six-hour meeting. Um, and, and that's what worries me. I think the public has a right to speak and we have a place for that. Um, but once we start having um, other places in a meeting, um, I, I get concerned just about the practical issue of us getting our work done. Um, and going forward in the future, trying to convince other people to take on this job when almost meeting after meeting, we're here until 11, sometimes 11.30, sometimes midnight. And while I wouldn't say the public comment is the main reason, um, maybe in fact it isn't the reason at all, and so my whole objection right. is, is is not mute. But I, I really am concerned going forward, uh, especially as we get into some very controversial issues over the next few months. That if we have special periods, I mean maybe it won't make any difference. The the comments will come at the beginning or they'll come wherever they're placed. But um, that's my concern is about us getting our work done and creating these special moments of extra public comment. Um, actually, uh, I understand the motive and I actually think it's a good one, but it actually prevents us, or I think it makes it harder for us to actually get our work done. And that's really important. So that's my concern. And um, at this point, I think perhaps we'll just let, let that sit because um, I don't think we have the time or the energy to wrestle with it. But um, that's my deep concern is that um, we're just, we're having a hard time getting our work done. George, yeah. one other comment and just so, again, we differentiate. Um, when we have special council meetings, which we may do, we are required to have a regular council meeting once a month, right. but it's only at regular council meetings that public comment is required. Right. Special council meetings, we do not have to require public comment. Right. And then the other thing is, and I'll just, this is a little bit of a preview. As we get ready for the library, there's yep. One evening in which there's a fairly long presentation and discussion with the council. That's going to be followed by one, if not two, public forums. Right, exactly. It's really, the intention there to have the public comment and not have it the night of the presentation, but you know, there'll still be a general public comment. So would that, that good that would then give you as a presiding officer, whoever the presiding officer is, the flexibility to say, look, we definitely want public comment, but it's not going to be at this meeting because we've got our business to do, but we're having a public forum or maybe multiple public forums where, you know, give the dates or whatever, and you're, that's what we have them for. So that, that makes sense to me. Okay, so this, I think we have before us a motion then, a potential motion. Um, yeah, I second it. <laughs> a motion and, to change the word shall second. convey in rule 4.3. Right, for the sake of second. the note. Yeah, so <laughs> is that clear, the motion, that we are essentially changing uh, shall to may in uh, rules of procedure 4.3? And it's been seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing I none, I'm, gonna go, I, I'm sorry? It should, I guess, be a motion to recommend changing. Right, thank we you. We can't change it on our own, sorry, to recommend changing. Okay, thank you. So that change to the motion, recommend changing. And I see no further comment. So I'm gonna go directly to a vote. Mandy? 
Uh, yes. The chair is a yes. Andy? Yes. Uh, Pat? Yes. Lynn? Yes. All right, that's unanimous, 5-0, to make that recommendation for Rules of Procedure 4.3. Mandy, you had a second? I have one more. Um, I'm gonna recommend because time is short that I mention what I'm thinking about and then come back at the next meeting with actual language because I think it would need to be tweaked. Um, and it's in rule 2.1, election of officers. Okay. Um, I, am, I am wondering whether this committee would support actually putting in the sort of um, rules that we've been using this last time and all and really thinking about that into you know the sort of the I don't know what we called that script or whatever um, but the procedures we've been using into the rules of procedure um, you know how much time to comment who comments the, the all of that and if the committee wants or thinks that's a good idea I'm happy to next come back with actual language I I want to just comment, George, and just say I think that would be terrific because I think one of the things we want to do is basically provide for future councils our practice. And that would put this in the place where it, they wouldn't have to look for it. Okay. Um, this is really then something for the perhaps the next meeting. That's what I have it penciled in tentatively if people are willing to take it up. We're not gonna take it up now, but any questions for Mandy about this and any thoughts about whether you wanna take it up? Not now, but later. I'd like to take it up later. Okay. okay. All right, then I'm going to uh, pencil this in as a uh, item for the uh, next meeting. Uh, Rules of Procedure 2.1, uh, election of officers and what Mandy's suggesting is that and she will provide us with a draft, but essentially- I will bring you an actual draft. Right, okay, good, all right. Um, what I have, so again, if anyone has any other specific rules of procedure they'd like us to review or discuss, um, please raise your hand or, or just speak up. But I have uh, two things that are in the packet that I was going to use uh, with your permission. And we can also just decide we just don't wanna deal with it. Um, because this, again, is just part of the process that I'm trying to create here for how do we manage to review um, this long and complex document. Um, and we could be done right now, quite frankly, but um, we were given a document that listed 14 things that were um, uh, sent to GOL a long time ago. And uh, the title of it is... Uh, where is it? Disposition referral of future agenda items to GOL. And um, it's, a, it's just basically a list of 14 topics, some of which aren't really not relevant to the rules of procedure necessarily. Um, and I, uh, we can save this for another day. I asked people to look at it, but I realize you're all very busy. Um, and the point of going through it, ideally in advance before we talk about it now, is that you might be able to uh, basically say many of these um, are simply not relevant or we need to talk about these some other day or we can just dispose of them right now. Um, for instance, item number two, these were issues raised by counselors um, that uh, Lynn basically put under the category of GOL. Um, some of them I think would involve changes to the rules of procedure if we thought they merited it. Um, some of them I don't think have anything to do with the rules of procedure. And actually, I'm not sure they have anything to do with GOL. Um, but that's what I have as a document. The other thing I have, and you can decide, is who proposes a bylaw. This is something that was raised to me the other day um, in terms of uh, what are the rules in terms of who can bring a bylaw uh, to the council. And so I also put a document in there that just reminds us of, of the uh, mass general law that governs uh, zoning uh, bylaws. There it's governed by law, but to my knowledge, there's nothing that governs uh, who can bring a general bylaw. Um, and whether we wanna get into that today, I don't know, but that was a, a, an issue that was raised as potential for uh, rules of procedure. Um, what are the rules? What do we tell people about who can bring a bylaw? So those are the two uh, sort of uh, uh, boxes or whatever bowls uh, that I have. And the question is, do you want to deal with either one of them or both or none? Mandy Joe has her hand up. Andy, Mandy, please. 
Yeah, I, I wonder if we could take the 14 and run through them quickly and just sort of do a informal poll for each one, whether it's something the committee thinks should be discussed in further detail or yep. whether it shouldn't be um, without the actual discussion of it in detail. But we might be able to eliminate a num number of these if everyone on the committee happens to agree. Right. I agree. I, I like that. I also think I'm prepared to take a few notes, like, for example, put this in our rules of procedure or already done or whatever. Right. That's, 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 what, that's what I have in mind. I agree. Um, okay. But I, anyone else have thoughts on this one way or the other? Again, this arose uh, from a, a memo that Lynn sent to us quite a while ago that um, I've extracted from that memo, this list of 14 items. Um, I felt that some of them would, would be interesting discussion or potential for the future. So if people are okay, um, we'll start with item number one, process of appointing non-voting members to the finance Lord, can committee. you make it bigger? Uh, That's me, hold on. Lynn, Lynn, see if you can make it bigger. I think you just have to zoom in. The hundred percent down at the bottom just needs to be more. Yeah. Yeah, that's better. Thank you. Okay. So okay. If, if I could comment on number one, um, this is on there through a CRC vote a while ago that didn't relate directly to only the finance committee. Um, CRC recommended that at one point that the council refer to GOL um, in particular, a discussion as to whether the council as a whole should have rules surrounding term limits and reappointments for all of the committees it appoints members to, um, or resident members to, so planning board, ZBA, and finance committee, um, or whether those should remain sort of, in some sense, at the discretion of each individual counselor. Um, so it's one I would like to see a discussion of at some point, um, but I would like to see it as sort of a comprehensive, should the council sell a full set of rules or should it be remain at the discretion of the council, individual counselors? Manny, would it be at their discretion or would it be, at the, I guess or what you mean is discretion of the individual committee that's responsible for the recommendation? Committee and and in the end the counselors who vote right right um, exactly no exactly yeah. right. okay I can get you the exact language CRC voted to ask the council to refer to GOL but it th that's what this one comes from is that sort right. of discussion I believe yeah no that's correct but that's a discussion later not today yeah not definitely today. one for later definitely this is something that people um, want to take up or uh, are adamantly against taking up or um, could care less? I think we should take it up but later. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so. Um, I want to know whether I'm still on the committee after today. <laughs> You'll find well, out later. <laughs> we all know the answer to that, Pat. You're the only one who doesn't, but not, I don't want you to feel, you know, bad about that but we all know the answer but we're not going to tell you come on not on it i'm going to give you guys a lot of work <laughs> <laughs> all right in other words, Pat's saying if she's on it she's going to say no to most of these <laughs> i know exactly so an item two um clarification regarding it off. i'm sorry item two Done. I, I have, yeah, I think that that nothing needs that's just take it out. Okay, good. That's right. And again, please speak up because I have my head down here a lot of the time. Don't be shy. Um, all right, how town councils can provide their thoughts, comments to town council committees they're not members of. Um, that's already dealt with in the rules. And could you give me the specific rule? Oh or, gosh, um, you're going to make that's me find right. that. Well, then, then <laughs> paraphrase it because clearly some counselors are confused about this. So, so the rule says that counselors may participate in committee meetings as a member of the public if they're not on that committee. There's So in that sense, that part's in the rules. Um, and then beyond that, to me, it's a logical thing of um, you can always email the chair of the committee. Right, of course. There are many, many ways you can express. But I, here's where I guess my thought is there's a difference between practice and rule. Because right. in practice, I think of TSO, a recent TSO meeting, where I think we were almost outnumbered. We certainly were outspoken by our uh, fellow counselors at a TSO meeting. Um, and so, so it was a committee really, of the whole. 
Okay, you call Committee of the Whole. Thank it you. was Committee of the Whole. Thank you. All right. That's that's my but ignorance. I think the issue is if a counselor would like their comments to be in writing, that's the one I've been asked. Hmm. If a counselor wants to write comments, yeah. how do they give them to the committee? They send them to the chair. Yeah. That's and what the I would chair. Does the chair post them? Uh I, 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 I would argue they should be so, required to. I'm sorry, Mandy. So t rule 10.2B2, counselors, including the president, not appointed as a member of a specific council committee are entitled to participate in the same man manner as members of the public. So 10.2B2 right, is what I just you. read. Um, right. And so they can provide their comments, but I would say they get treated as any other member of the public. So if the committee does not... Um, published public comments written to the committee, um, then in theory, those counselor public comments would not get published. That doesn't mean that the chair can't, under discretion, bring up those issues during discussion and even potentially identify what counselor made them or what member of the public made them. Hmm. Because committees always, committee members always have the option of bringing up items that members of the public have mentioned as part of the discussion. Well, I'm just thinking of the practice. I, sometimes we will solicit comments from our colleagues and then we will present them at the meeting uh, for the first time. We don't send them in advance, but we present them at the meeting. And in my practice, based on other people's practice, I do not give names. I just list number them, one, two, three, whatever. And then we go through those comments. Um, this is different than that? I mean, isn't this the same? I mean, so if, if somebody- It, it comment, is. I, it I is. mean, I- it's coming from a specific counselor who would okay. like to be able to send comments to a committee. Okay. Have them become public. Hmm. Without solicited by the committee for all counselors to do so. Right? Uh, yes. Yes. Thank you for that clarification. All right. Sounds like it's a discussion for next time. Or for a future, a future time. Uh, unless people have a feeling like, um, the rule is there, um, and for written comments, it, you know, it's not really appropriate. I mean, wh why would it be appropriate for somebody to be able to have their written comments sent to a particular committee to be made public? I mean, it seems if they want to say something publicly, they can say it in a council meeting, or right. they can come and speak as a member of the public, or they can talk to individual colleagues as long as they don't violate the uh, open meeting law, they can speak to their colleagues. Um, what's the what's the argument here? I think we need to just put it Maybe. aside. Obviously, okay. yeah. People want to come back to it, though. Yes. Okay. All right. That votes four to one. All right. I think Good. it's three to two. I'd rather not. But <laughs> so it's three to two. All right. Um, all right. We'll come back to it, and maybe we'll dismiss it quickly or whatever. But we'll come back to three. Um, at a future date, because there does seem to be some interest in, in a further discussion. Um, I, four, uh, I don't see where we, are, we have any role to play in telling town committees what they, how their reports should be written. But anybody thoughts on four? I agree. I mean, we yep. could create a template, but they don't have to follow it, and why should they, right? I mean, right, so let's not waste the time making a template. Well, we won't today, but I guess, Pat, the question is whether people feel like, you know, uh, well, yeah. No, we don't have the right to tell a committee how to structure their reports. So right. why even go to the uh, work of creating a template that's not then going to be used? Right. Or well, could, it, it's just a waste of our time, anybody's time. Actually, uh, I think we as a council have a right to say things like, you know, we would like uh, the reports to include who was there, who was absent, uh, the major themes of the discussion, if there was a minority vote, those kinds of things. But the committees get to set their own rules regarding that under the charter. So we can't tell them exactly what has to be involved. And are these annual reports that uh, we're hoping to get? Is basically, we're talking about annual reports. Um, no. In other words, no. Committees don't do annual reports. 
Okay, so this is just any report that they might send. For oh, whatever. no, wait a minute. I'm sorry. This this does address. This is not town council committees. This right. is. I'm sorry. I I mis um. This came from a counselor, based on the um, annual reports that are required by virtue of the charter. Right. And I personally believe it's getting to be too in depth if we start trying to set rule, um, okay. rules. Those annual reports are not part of the legislative section of the charter anyway. They're part of the elected offices section and the board of license commissioner section. So I don't believe we have any right to tell them what they have to look like. Okay. Right. All right. I think there's a consensus there unless I hear otherwise. We're, uh, Andy, please. Yeah, I, I would just check because there's always been an annual town report um, since the uh, history began. And I think that it's actually a requirement somewhere in state statute and committees include reports. All committees are supposed to provide reports for those annual reports. And so we better make sure that the um, annual reports, which were really put together, I think by the clerk, Mm -hmm. um, uh, that, that we're working in a manner that's consistent with other reports that are being provided to them and not duplicative at the same time. I think we need to discuss this later because we're getting in too deep. Yep. Okay. Um, I guess there's two things. One is, uh, are we going to dictate how the reports themselves be written? And the answer seems to be clearly we're not. The other seems to be, um, uh, it, and this seems a question for the clerk, um, and I, I'm not sure that there has been a problem, which is, are the committees actually doing what they're supposed to do in terms of the annual town report? But that's a clerk question, um, not a question for us. Is that correct? So Andy's question is really just, you know, uh, reaching out to the clerk and saying, you know, are, are you getting what you need? Uh, are, are we following, are, they, are committees following the rules uh, that are set down? But we don't set the rules and we don't oversee it correct? And being a city, there might not be an annual town report anymore under state law. All right. So, so we need to check the state staff. The chair, the chair needs to look into this and he can do that. Um, okay. And also, okay. All right. And if, if need be, it'll come back. If not, it won't. Okay. I'm, All the, right. one, I'm the one that's introduced this next one. And I think it's a later discussion. I agree. And okay, and it's something that's suitable for GOL. Yes. Where, where else would it go? Okay, so this is for later as well. Uh, I don't know quite what accessibility to meetings means, but that's all that was there. So I wrote it down. It means that's hearing good. and language and sign, including sign language. Okay. And to me, it also means uh, having people's uh, faces present from the public. Uh, I, I, you know, the way that we do it. Um, right. Keeps us right. in isolation. It doesn't have to be right. talked about right now. Right. I, I agree. It's a discussion for a separate meeting. And people feel like they do want to discuss it. Yep. That's two. Anyone else? Yes. Okay. All right. So that. All right. Sign language, public visible uh, platform, basically the Zoom platform issue. Okay. How to share public comment. I think we, we should just discuss this with, I think we should discuss it later and we should include um, the clerk of the council. Okay. I can, can I get a clarity on this? Because I'm one that already Please. has an opinion if I think I know what this means. Is this um, trying to publish every single email that we got get in our email inboxes as quote public comment for a specific meeting? Or, or a specific issue. Yes, it is. That's what this means. So this is this is ba basically about emails, messages, and what to do with them from constituents. And whether to put them in the packet or not in wholesale. Is that that's the issue there? Yep. And no, nothing else. That's really it. So it's really what to do with um, emails on a specific issue from the public. I don't think they should be placed in the packet. We all get them and we should be reading them. Right. That's not the, the, the person that's pushing this is interested in making sure the public sees them. Frankly, 
No, I could go on. I think this is a discussion. So I agree with Pat. Meaning, I, I'm sorry. I don't really want to talk about this later. I think it's an unreasonable request right. to our town staff and they have better things to spend their time on than this. Since and counselors it, get these anyway and- yes. um, And if the public really wants to read it, they can make a public records request. So I'm going to strike this unless I hear any strong opposition. We're not going to come back to this, at least not, and this committee is not coming back to it unless we're compelled to do it, unless it's referred. That's okay. Question. Um, Lynn, please. If we have an item, library being one, school building being another, if we have something like that, can a decision be made to have a place on the website for public comment or something? I, I mean, I think that's a separate issue than publishing emails because that would be a separate type of platform. I mean, if, if you go to, for say the library and decide to publish emails, are we going back two years to every single email we've gotten or is it during a specific time period? I, I think it's just too much staff time. Okay. All right, so that is going to be stricken, number seven. Eight, emails, texts from constituents during meetings. Rule 6.1 C and D in our rules of procedure kind of deal with this matter. Again, 6.1 C and D. Okay. And what do they say, Mandy? They say, let me, let me get up to those rules. Those are ones I, I already had that number written down, so I didn't have to look it up. Um, 6.1 C says cell phones and other such devices shall be silenced during council meetings. And D, counselors and members of the public shall not hold private conversations during council meetings. All right, that seems pretty clear. And uh, I will not discuss, I just won't say anything. <laughs> You can text the information to the, fifth. the council meeting. I'm going to plead the fifth on this one. Um, only once. But I, <laughs> I think yeah. we are all going to plead the fifth, George. <laughs> but, but I think yep. your point is well taken. It, it should not happen. It's against the rules. And in my case, it will not happen again. But I was not. I guess I'm learning the rules. Okay. I, yeah. I, have, I, I will just tell you there are times that counselors have become disconnected. And they have texted me to tell me that. That's different. Yeah, that's different. That's different. Yeah. Yeah. But we, we did have a situation uh, not too long ago where there was tremendous confusion about the rules governing elections. And I have a feeling that there was a fair amount of emailing going on. Um, and maybe, it's, in other words, it's the rule, but sometimes it gets broken for whatever reason. And But we're not supposed to. And the answer is this is against the rules. Right. Except as, as I yeah. heard... As I heard Mandy reading that rule, it was about communications amongst the council. And this is really talking about communications from the public. Just, so if, oh, go on, Andy. Well, I think I've said it, so I'm just seeking clarification. So section D says counselors and members of the public shall not hold private conversations during council meetings. Oh, okay. Read no. as between counselors or between members, you know, when we're in a meeting or amongst the two. Yeah. And it, it does make very good sense. Um, it's a public meeting. People should have access to our deliberation. And if we're having deliberations <laughs> secretly with whomever, it, that's totally inappropriate. Um, so that I think that's answered. Um, rules and guidelines for when the president calls a committee of the whole. Mandy Jo put this one in because I did not consult her first about a CRC meeting. Uh -huh. <laughs> I stay in full. So this one is personal. Uh, this is personal. No, it, it's part of that, but I think Alyssa originally brought this forward like a year and a half ago when there was a lot of committee of the whole meetings being called. Um, but I, I actually would say there shouldn't, we, we don't need to deal with it. It's just something that people should work out on their own. 
Any other thoughts on this? I feel it rises to the level of us needing to discuss it further. Oops. Okay. All right. So we're going to strike that. Yeah. I think 10 is, should be stricken. Reviewed annually anyway. It's yeah. reviewed annually by the rules. So I'm good well, with the help, current. Help me with that, actually, because I mean, that that's certainly not anything I've been thinking about or we've been talking about. So well, we I'm, briefly, no, I, I disagree, George. We briefly discussed it at one point. We said we don't think we need a change this year. Okay. No, well, that, you know, all right. But the thought is that we are supposed to, as part of our charge, we are. To consider yeah. the committee structure and whether we think there's any need for a change. Um, and I'm getting a sense from the members here that there is no sense that we need a change. Um, and unless counselors or individual counselors have something very specific, this is stricken. It's been considered, been considered. Okay, is the answer. Okay. Uh, now this one also I think has been settled. Um, and again, my one sole uh, objection was with this committee. Um, and I still maintain that if you're a member of this committee and you're presenting something um, as a sponsor, you, sh you should not vote on whether it's clear, consistent, actionable. I have no problem with you participating. I have no problem with you, right? But I, I think for this particular committee, um, it seems inappropriate. Now I know some of us uh, do it as a matter of course, and I think that's where we're just going to leave it. I don't think it's worth our time and effort, but I just want to go on record that that it's not about counselors in other committees or other contexts. It's just with this particular committee, given its charge, it does seem to me inappropriate for a sponsor to be voting on whether it's clear, consistent, and actionable. Right, and that's, I disagree with you. Yeah. You but agree I think, or disagree, Lynn? I disagree. Yeah, I do okay. too. All I right. don't think any state statute allows us to bar a council from voting on anything unless right, no matter what it is statute. Yeah. okay well I, think that's I, what we I guess george is there ever been a time where you felt like there was some egregious no 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 but i just yeah, think it's, it just, it's just not appropriate i mean you know because why? You're obviously why? biased i mean you know this is your baby and you're but being asked. i'm biased about the substance of of what i'm presenting not well, whether it's clear, consistent, and actionable, because I feel like when I've when I've worked on things and they have gotten better, or some a change might have happened that I don't completely agree with, but it's not one that affects things substantively. And I think that it's it's I don't under I just don't understand your I don't understand it. Okay, all right. I'm well, going to say everything today that I want to say. <laughs> particularly how much I enjoy this committee in case I'm not on it. Go ahead. Well, that's, that's a fine endorsement. You, you're, you're out the door and you're telling Excuse us how me. you like us. Uh, that's May that. I text Pat? <laughs> I've used that on a few old girlfriends. It didn't no, work. It'll break the <laughs> you're going to break the rules. The president particularly <laughs> got to be rule bound. Andy, please, Andy. Yeah, I mean, I raised this when I first joined the committee, uh, and it was sort of my instant reaction because it seemed to me that uh, there was a lot going on back and forth on a particular issue, and I'm not going to go back and revisit that particular issue, where there was a lot of dialogue happening with town council, with outside sponsors and advocates for the uh, it, for the issue that we were confronting, and um, it just uh, struck me that there was just too much participation to say that the uh, members of the committee could then say that they were. Um, could separate out their roles easily between uh, what they're doing as members of the committee and what they were doing as sponsors or advocates. And, and it just struck me as uncomfortable. And that was as a new member of the committee. And um, I, felt, it, it, I felt strongly about it. Did you feel, Andy, that that basically we were crossing the line into advocacy for or against the item, as opposed to simply trying to get it in a form that was uh, acceptable 
to everyone to get before the council is being clear, consistent, actionable. Because again, we tried, sometimes not successfully, to focus our energies simply on the clarity of the document, uh, the consistency, uh, and the actionability. And apart from our own feelings about whether we think this is a good idea or not, um, I know I've been in that situation, and I'm probably going to be in that situation again soon, where yep. I think something is is not really a great idea. But that's different from my uh, role here, which is just to make sure that it is clear, uh, consistent, and and something that that is actionable. Um, so I think we've done a pretty good job with that. But it sounds like, at least in your experience so far, you felt it's a little fuzzier, and at times people have crossed over into the line of advocacy as opposed to simply trying to do the job that that we're doing. Uh, or is it more that you're not? I mean, there's some lack of clarity about the job itself that we're doing. In other words, about clear, consistent, and actionable. I think that it's because there's uh, so much confusion about what the terms clear, consistent, and actionable mean. And I'm not sure that we're ever going to improve on that beyond what we have now. But um, some of it comes there. And yeah, it, a little bit of it did come across as advocacy. Um, but I don't think it was necessarily meant in a bad way. The no. sponsors were trying to make sure that the best possible um, language was before the council. And they were doing that both as a sponsor and as a member of the committee to make sure it was clear, consistent, and actionable. So and that's where the confusion comes in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'm prepared to move on. I think I've accepted, uh, not defeat here, but I think it's the position, <laughs> uh, the position's been made clear. Um, and so uh, I'm ready to strike it. Um, we certainly can come back at any time to Andy's larger issue of, you know, the meaning of those three words and um, how it plays out in actuality. That's certainly something we can take up at any time if a member wishes to do so. Um, at the moment, I'm not planning to put it on any agenda, but if people feel strongly individually that they'd like us to go back and revisit that, um, at some future point, we certainly can do that. Number 12? Yes, any I, 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 I law on the books. TSO. Huh? I vote to send it over to TSO if we think it should be discussed. There is a bylaw on the books. Yep. Uh, which I came across when I was preparing for my own bylaw assignment. Yep. So you say look to review or are you saying refer bylaw to TSO? So, so I am saying it doesn't belong in GS, GOL if there's a review that it belongs in TSO. I don't, that, that has no bearing on whether I believe we should be doing anything at all with it right now. It's just, it doesn't belong in GOL. Okay. Um, Do we want to decide if it needs to be reviewed? What, Lynn? Do we want to decide if it needs to be reviewed? I think that should be a council decision and the councilor or councilors need to bring it up at a meeting and say, mm -hmm. we want this dealt with. And then the council should vote to send it hopefully to the right place, which would be TSO. Um, but I'm not sure we have the authority to send it to TSO or even recommend that. Um, it's really, if somebody wants to raise this, as, if this has been raised by a counselor. It has. Then it needs to be brought up, I guess, at a council meeting and briefly discussed. And then the council needs to vote where to send it. Um, and I think Mandy's correct. It should probably go to TSO, but I don't think we have a place in this. Okay, I am just writing myself a note here. I mean, and if there's a counselor that wants to have a rule, that discussion should actually be accompanied by, since there's a bylaw, probably by an actual bylaw amendment, not just a general right. discussion. I, I'm, I'm aware of who the counselor is. I will send the bylaw to them and just say, you know, you need to decide if this is sufficient. And okay? do you know, Lynn, the bylaw number? Do you have that handy or not? Um, that's all right. It's okay. I'm in a pile on my desk. No, yeah, you get the same pile I have. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, good. So Lynn will take care of that. Um, so that's stricken. Town manager evaluation, goal setting process. We're dealing with that right now. And bylaws, that's we're dealing with that as well. So 13 and 14 are things we're working it on. It is bylaw 3.49. 3.49. Thank, Thank you. Okay. 
Thank you very much. 3.49. Yep. Thank you. Okay. okay. This is in process. All right. So we've gone through this. Thank you. Um, and I will uh, sort it out and start putting things on agendas where we've asked to have them come back. Um, but I find this very helpful. The other item that I put as about who proposes a bylaw. Do people want to discuss this today um, or at least be introduced to the problem or do they want to hold this for a future? Um, so if we have a moment, we can put that overhead up um, or we can just say, no, let's move on. Okay. I, I'm, hold on just two seconds. Sure. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna just stop sharing this and hope I've got all the things saved. Um, can I uh, just say on the on the bylaw issue, yep. we, we, if we don't do it now, we need to do it soon because right now we have two bylaws that are coming up because the state is requiring them. That's illicit discharge and um, wastewater, I think, stormwater, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And then we have two more bylaws coming up, um, coming up from committees of the, of the town. One is coming from the um, Historic Commission and the other is coming from the Shade Tree Commission. And so while we don't have to resolve this today, it needs to be moved up in, in importance. Pat. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's not 3.49, it's 3.39, 39. Okay. Right. Sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, so, given what Lynn said, um, we have a section of our rules. I think it was part of the document you provided, George, um, on bylaw introduction. Um, I'd, I'd be willing to, inter, you know, to, to draft a change to that section of the rules that address who can sponsor a general bylaw and who can sponsor a non a zoning bylaw similar to what we did with resolutions and proclamations but writing it into the rules of procedure yeah i think that i think that's right Andy Joe. and i ask a question about so the state is very clear state law is very clear about zoning and residents what would be your thinking or do we want to leave this for another time you know, can one resident uh, propose a new general bylaw? Can 10 residents uh, or can residents not propose a general bylaw? Is it something, maybe this is open for us to figure out. Yeah, because I mean, so I think my initial draft would, I, I'm not sure what I'd do with residents in general bylaws right now. I will tell you that right now. I don't know where that would be, but my initial draft would be, would include any one counselor, the town manager, or any committee by a vote of the committee of uh, any town committee by a vote of the committee of the town. And the manager would presumably sponsor anything staff proposes, you know. Um, that, so, so that would be sort of where I would start from if I drafted a rule. Yeah. Yeah. I think the question, Mandy Joe, that, uh, and all, to the whole committee, I mean, let's give an example. The example is the wild animal one. Rose. Right residents, unlike town meeting, we never collected signatures. Um, I took it, I wrote, I sent the thing out to the counselors and Shalini volunteered and she became the sponsor. Um, the same thing is not identical, but it has some parallel nature to it. And that is when the um, people from the labor unions approached us on the two bylaws you and Pat sponsored, you Pat mm -hmm. Kathy sponsored. I think it was um, the two of you, the three of you. Um, you know, you basically volunteer. I think I also sent it to the council and the three of you volunteered the sponsors. So I think it's really the issue of what happens when it comes from the public that yeah. feels a little shadier to me. Okay. And we've got some, some guidance with resolutions and proclamations and obviously the charter. And I think our resolution and proclamation was you got to find a council sponsor because a counselor has a right to do that. Um, and if you don't, then you got to follow the, the. Well, you could go to a committee. You could go to a town committee. You could. Yeah. Right. There are other options, but yes. just good. So Manny's going to produce a draft, and that's something that we could even deal with at our next meeting. But soon is what Lynn would like. So um, I will. Yeah. Uh, okay. 
I will put that down as a possible item for next time. And then the other bylaw, I mean, the other rules of procedure issue is one that relates to the charter, George, and that's 8.1. Yes, um, and that is, I believe, our next agenda item. Uh, if I am, uh, actually, before I got to 8.1, I want to briefly, for your sake, Lynn, I hope, but just you've been looking for input from GOL about um, required and future agenda items in 2021. And yes. you may already have everything you need. I think you asked the members of this committee to forward you anything that you they could think of. Um, I didn't come up with much myself. Um, anyone have, so I came up with what? Every, and so every year we must review the rules of procedures. Okay, that was easy. Um, we also manage, I understand, we manage and prepare the town managed performance goals document. So that's something it seems that we, at the moment are, uh, are supposed to do and, and produce it as a deliverable by a certain date. That's something that, that we do, um, right? Yeah. Right. Right. Um, and we, we also, also oversee the town manager evaluation process. That is correct. Now that's not a specific agenda item, but it gets on the agenda at certain points, but that's yeah. much an internal thing for us to keep track of. Um, but, and then um, we do owe the council a report and that will go on the agenda at some point for bylaws for future consideration that right now what we've said is we'll give that to them in March. So we owe a report um, and a discussion, I assume, but at least a report on, uh, and maybe that's not an agenda item, maybe it's just a report, but um, we, we owe them that. Other than that, I could not think of anything. Now, maybe- Well, the only other thing, and, and, and I will just tell you that Athena has already given me a list of all of the, you know, regular, if you will, routine um, uh, proclamations that we pass. Okay, and if you could forward that to me, uh, or I can reach out to Athena, that would be, yep. you know, I keep telling myself that's something I should have been doing all along. Um, so she has be the best records, George, not to worry. Yeah. Joe no, has I'm, I'm thinking, go, you know, someday, maybe even soon, there'll be a new chair of this committee. That may be hard for some of you to imagine. It's not hard <laughs> for me to imagine, but it may be hard for some of you to imagine. And I would like to be able to pass on to that, that poor fellow or whatever, that poor soul, um, that list of proclamations so they have some sense of, of the many things they have to do, so. Um, I will reach out to Athena and ask her to send it to me. But and Nico has her hand up. <laughs> she does. The only other thing I would add to the list, you'll see this in vain, you know, in, in, as CRC did, um, finance committee appointments. We're going to have yep. to do them as GOL. So that's going to have to be on the council agenda for June. Very, you know, that busy. Is Thank you, Mandy. That is right. Finance appointments in June. There might only be one, but. Um, right. Yep. Okay. And I will reach out to Athena. That's a note to myself. Okay. Okay. You know, and then it's it's just the ongoing um, other bylaws as they come up. Exactly right. There's nothing that we can plan. That's just the way it happens, right? Okay. All right. Good, Lynn. Hopefully that gives you something that will be helpful to you. I have nothing further to add. Anyone else? So that's agenda item number four. Now agenda item number five is in fact charter section 8.1. And uh, Andy had many, many, I think very good suggestions. So what uh, we have as far as uh, something to look at is attachment D, uh, that document was in the uh, uh, SharePoint and of course publicly posted. Um, and if Lynn can put that up, um, we should look at that and see if we if it captures what we want and if not we need to change it and then there are a whole host of questions related to that that we need to get clarity on in terms of the process um, and we have about well we have pretty good time i think um, um I'm at least sorry. 15, 20 minutes yep do you want me to share it or if you can't find uh, it, Lynn. Is this, is this what you're talking about, George? And you and I have- It should be attachment D. It should be attachment D. It's a Word document. 
Yeah. It's a Word document, so we can play oh, with okay. it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. So now, Lynn, you may have some other things you want to discuss first with this. Um, so we don't have to start with this, but this was my attempt to um, incorporate the suggestions from the last meeting and um, we'll probably definitely, so I think it's gonna need some further editing, but um, there's some things you wanted to discuss first. Do you wanna go right to this? No, don't, this is fine, go. Okay, well, um, so attachment D, this is the format. Um, and I think one question we had was whether, uh, you know, we're really creating something that in theory could be used by the school committee or the library trustees, but it also seems to me that they could look at this and go, we don't like this, we wanna do something different. Is that in fact the case? Um, and if it is, then maybe we have to take out library and, and school committee. Um, we're hoping that they'll take this and run with it, but it, really it's they, they get to decide, right? Yes. Or today. Yeah, okay, so this, um, so down below, uh, what, I, as I recall, I think it was Andy's suggestion, but basically legible name, legible address. Um, I guess that little box needs to be moved just a little bit to the right. <laughs> it should be check if 18 or older. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Phone Now here, uh, phone number or email address for contact purposes only. And then the, I'm not sure, again, somebody help me. Why do we even need a signature if we're really only interested in contacting? Um, but I put it in because it was requested. I think um, our, it was gonna be a three part one and one of the, and it was gonna be phone number, email address or signature. One of them is required because of, um, for verification purposes. But if we're going to contact people and all they do is sign it. We'll have a legible address. Thank you. We can that send a correct. piece of paper to everyone. Good. So then maybe it should be one box that says phone number, email address, or signature. And then uh, for contact purposes only. But I think also it has to read optional. No, it, we were going to require one of the three. Okay. So then optional gets deleted and it just becomes a single box. And I'm not sure it's contact purposes. It was for verification purposes. Okay, because contact purposes may be simply dealt with by sending a postcard or something based yeah. on their legible address. Right, it so was for, for verification ver purposes. And I think our thought was um, one of the three because the whole thing might be public record. And so someone might not want a phone number, email address, and we don't know whether they could be redacted. And so you could then just provide your signature instead. Okay. This is for verification purposes only. And- um, We might okay. wanna check whether if it becomes, a, I, I assume it becomes a public record, whether phone numbers and email addresses can get redacted if produced under a public records request. Yeah, I'm, I'm writing that over in a column that I can't even see what I'm writing. Uh, can we redact this column? In response to a public records request, yeah. Okay. How about um, in response to, you know, I mean, town meeting used to publish the names of any petitioners. Right. So I guess the first question is to uh, the rest of you. Are you happy with the way this looks? Uh, notice I moved the please include purposes of the meeting item up to the text and took it out of the, uh, but that's a very minor thing. Um, it could be put back where it was, I don't really care. And also it sounds like we would then strike school committee or library trustees. Or do we want to, at the moment, treat this as a generic document that Paul could then forward to uh, the school committee or library trustees and they can decide if they want to use it? Or do we just want to strike it and um, uh, you know, basically leave this up to them to figure out what they want to do? Two things. One, I think we should strike that the Amherst um, school committee or library trustees. 
The other thing is I want to go to, it says check if 18 or older. That yeah. if I were a young person, uh, 15, uh, I'm still a resident and uh, I might want a public, um, an open meeting about a particular issue. And I should be able to sign this without some kind of condition about my age. I think most people who were under 18, therefore would not sign this with that there. So unless there's some legal requirement that it be a person that's 18, I don't think it should be there. The charter requires it to be a request of residents 18 or older. Can we, but see that? So, so the question, I think our question last week, Pat, was yeah. do we wanna add a rule to our rules of procedure that mimics 8.1, but does not is not called 8.1 that doesn't require that age requirement? So that then a request wouldn't be under section 8.1, it would be under rule of procedure X, Y, or Z. That would be fine with me. I mean, I, one of the things that we've watched around climate issues is the response of young people. And that's also true, they've been true about racism in Amherst. Uh, we have young people now on the Human Rights Commission and on um, the Community Safety Working Group. So they should have every right that I have. Well, so what we could do is have two formats. Um, or not, um, or you know, maybe Pat it just or say or age. People don't always want to disclose their age. I'm wondering though if we write a new. There's a rule in the rules of procedure that talks about Section 8.1. Yeah. Um, of the charter, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we could draft a new rule of procedure um, that references 8.1, but says all requests under 8.1 shall fall under this rule too, and, or, you know, or this rule does whatever, or we could would figure out- Would you be willing what, to do that? I, I would be willing to try to, to sort of word it so it's not under section 8.1 if there, are, you know, something like that, but then it would also be, include the procedures we talked about, about notifying the all who, you know, who are listed as of the time and location of the meeting and then a public notice procedure that I think Andy talked about two weeks ago that we could write into the rules of procedure or if we didn't want to, I think it would have to be a separate rule um, into some sort of policy document. Okay. So maybe Bob, Jim, I'm hearing a couple different questions. So I just want to clarify. One is we may put in our rules of procedure a second option for 15. But there's two issues that you just raised that Andy or you, somebody raised last time, and that is not listed here. And that is the notification of all who are listed about the meeting and publicly posting the meeting. Yeah. Right? And so I'm thinking of sort of in similar to what I just proposed or what we were talking about in terms of other rules, adding to the rules of procedure, more specifics on, of charter section 8.1 regarding its operation. And including this document in this format and all of that. So proposing it essentially as a new rule of procedure that complies with 8.1, but expands so that really the request is not under 8.1, it's under rule of procedure 10 point whatever, or whatever it would be. So no, yeah, okay. I, I think so that, that that's the method in which to re realize this, but I still have, I'm struggling with the, the larger point. Um, why 15? Why not 16? Why not 14? I mean, there's a certain arbitrariness here. Secondly, um, you could encourage young people to sign this document um, even though the actual uh, numbers that make it a, a binding one apply only to uh, residents 18 or older because they are voters. Um, so I, I'm, I'm sympathetic to the idea of involving young people. I'm a little concerned about the burden on staff, um, and it's, uh, first of all, and secondly, the arbitrariness of the age. 
Um, you know, it, it, you know, so 18 has a, a very specific function in our society at the moment. Now, if we change that, fine, but at the moment, that's what it's, it's there for. Um, could there be a way that, um, so the 18 or older simply makes it clear that you can be younger than this and sign it and, and put your name down. Um, but but it won't count. That, I understand that. Um, but there's also the question of, you know, uh, just sheer, I mean, let's say, you know, a family of, of five, uh, the parents sign it and the three kids sign it. Do all five of them require then notification uh, individually? I'm just worried about the, the demand on staff. Um, well, that's not the only thing. And the other thing is, you know, what's the age limit? Um, and why 15? Why not 16? Why not 14? Um, so uh, can people speak to that a little bit? Because I'm, I'm troubled by both of those. The arbitrariness of the age and also the, the burden on staff um, if you do have, in addition to the, the residents who are 18 or older, now you also have to contact individually uh, people who are younger. Um, any thoughts on that at all? Maybe none. In terms of 15, I don't think there should be a limit. Uh, I don't think many 10 year olds would sign this, a document, but they might, and that might be really interesting. I'd love to see a movement of 10 year olds. They're often smarter than we are. <laughs> but if we did it, um, I don't know what age I would put on it. I would think about traditional ages at certain grade levels and what they learn. Um, right. Because, you know, there's a lot of curriculum out there where educators are trying to teach students about petitioning government or trying to get a change and it's an organized sort of um, plan. Mm -hmm. So I'd want to think about how if we put an age, a minimum age on it below the 18, if we're going to rewrite a rule and sort of enact a rule in lieu of the charter, um, what age would be appropriate given the curriculum and where educators are in Amherst is to the civics education. So let me just get, refresh all of our memories. Back in normal times, we would be invited to the fair that Fort River would have. And they were specifically, in many instances, wanting to propose bylaws and stuff about environment and right. that kind of thing. Um, you know, those students could organize at Fort River being about age 10 and, you know, demand a public meeting. Once a year. Once a year. And, you know, I'm not saying I'm, I think that's wrong. I'm just saying we need to anticipate the, what door we're opening. I actually think it'd be terrific for them to have mock legislative meetings and everything else. <laughs> But you do get into the question of the amount of council time. Absolutely. And which is, again, what's the reality? Right. I think there's also a desire simply to create a, right, a workable document right now, rather than resolve um, a much more complicated, larger issue. Um, but if the sense is that we want to resolve that issue, then we'll come back to this in terms of the age and what that then means in terms of the document and also in terms of the rules of procedure. And also it seems to me in terms of staff time. Um, so. Yeah, I think you need to be very careful about what you're doing based upon the Fort River experience, which I think is a wonderful program. But the way Fort River was set up is that the um, staff who was working with those students would divide it into groups and they may have three or four different issues that they are running and they actually have a process to select the issues. So they start with a, even a larger number of issues in order to select down to the number of issues that they present to members of the legislature, Congress and counselors who have frequently come to that. Congressman McGovern used to come quite, a, quite frequently and uh, so you could have multiple issues and um, if each one of them starts generating requests for um, an 8.1 type of public meeting, you're really putting a large burden on the council 
we may want it, but I don't think you do it, should do that lightly. And then you got um, one or two other elementary schools that we're actually going to pick up on that form of curriculum. Um, and I think that uh, the teacher at uh, Fort River had gotten a grant to, to work with the other schools to do that, but then the whole thing got coveted to use a make up a verb. <laughs> I just see this as a potential um, sinkhole um, for the moment, unless we really are not in a, in a rush to get this uh, moved along. I got the feeling that this is something that Paul, perhaps Lynn felt we really need to, to get this uh, in some format uh, going forward. We can always play with it later. Um, the way it's written at the moment, it seems to suggest that any resident can sign it, but you must be 18 years or, of age or older for it to actually count to whether there'll actually be a public meeting. I'm perfectly comfortable with that, but I may be alone in that feeling. Um, Lynn, I'm sorry. Uh, Pat? Yeah, I wanna just point out that whatever we do needs to incorporate the legal review and it does not need to be, quote, a signature or a wet signature. It All it needs to be is a name. It can be done electronically, which is what the recent one does. I, I think we need to try and draft a rule of procedure. That, that would, the proposed yeah, format. The, I'm sorry, Mandy would incorporate? The proposed format. Whatever and that I'm willing to try and tackle that. So basically, you're suggesting we should pay attention to this, then turn to the issue later on of 18. Yes. I'm sorry, I can make this bigger. No, I, I, I had already minimized things. I can read it. Yeah, that's what I'm suggesting. Yeah, I, I agree. As much as I, I want us for the purpose of you know, supporting education and democracy to think about the other, but I want to make sure we get this one done. And I, the reason I'm pushing it is because now that the schools have actually used the 200 signature thing, I think we're going to see this being used by other groups. Fair enough. And then it's, it's what it's there for. Um, so, Drafting I'm willing to try and change it into rules of procedure. Is that something you want to try to do right now or something you we're going to? For next meeting. <laughs> that next meeting is getting very interesting, getting kind of full. Um, Mandy Joe's walking away with a lot of assignments. Well, I, I, she and I will reach out and maybe I can yeah. take some of this off her shoulders. But um, uh, at the moment, I have absolutely no idea how we'd create a rule of procedure that would incorporate this document, but I, I certainly, I think uh, I could come up with something. We, we I would already have one idea, attachment but... to our rules of procedure, so we can just have another. Basically, I would have you... hand to help, if, but I'm not until I see what the uh, community No, Andy, is. right. We understand. Yeah, yeah. That, that's Basically, no George's statement was that we're not going to count Anybody can sign it, which is fine. I can go with that. But right. basically, you said that you would not count. So if 150 15-year-olds signed a petition along mm -hmm. with 20 uh, residents who were 18 or right. older, you would not have an open meeting. And I think that's inappropriate. And that's what I'm concerned about, mm -hmm. that right. you're saying, hey, they're just not going to count. We can, they, can, they can sign it but it doesn't count yeah. and it okay. should count. And I'm not gonna say any more. Okay, okay. If you're dealing straight with 8.1, you gotta deal with what the uh, charter says and what the state statutes are regarding voting age. We can't change voting age as our friends in Northampton are discovering. It's not about changing voting ages. It right. is about allowing someone to sign this document who's under 18 and then counting them as a resident who wants an open meeting. Right. Well, we can't do that. Yeah, I'm sorry, Andy, go ahead. Andy, I'm sorry. Because the charter is the block. 
Too it many is. things. And Pat's point that the charter is the block. So uh, to have signatures for, I think that the point is that they have to invite people who are under 18 to sign a document and then tell them you can sign it, but it's a meaningless signature right. is really a slap in the face. Yep. And no, I understand that. that. Yeah. that, that. I think in the short term, we need to create something. Um, and so for the next meeting, um, Mandy and perhaps working with me, we'll, we'll produce a rule of procedure that um, we then can, I don't know, look at and I don't really know. Um, yeah. Again, I'm still concerned about demands on staff time. I'm still concerned about the limitations of, that the charter imposes and state law imposes. And I prefer to get something that actually at the moment fits reality and then think of ways that we can uh, perhaps broaden this over time. But right now um, it's, it's, you know, there may be soon, there may be other groups that want to bring a public, ask for a public meeting and they're gonna ask us what the rules are and what's the procedure. And I think that we need to set that and then we can come back and, and try and figure out how to expand it if, if that's the desire of the committee. Um, but that's what I'm, I'm thinking. And Mandy is going to be asked to, uh, perhaps working with me, to produce an ROP that would reflect the current situation. And if we can come to agreement on that, we can then forward this to Paul and, um, and say this is the procedure that we, we are adopting. But that's just what I'm envisioning for the short term. Does the do the rest of you want to wrestle with the the issue of young the young vote um, as well at this point, or do you want to leave that for a moment and try and first just get the process settled, um, and then we could come back and revisit it at some future date? I guess that's the question. I know Pat has spoken very eloquently on why she thinks that's something we should uh, wrestle with now. Um, I am obviously reluctant to deal with it right now. I think it's just it's too much. I actually can deal with it later as long as it actually comes up. And I know that you and Mandy are working on uh, addressing it in some form. Then I can let it go for today's meeting. So my suggestion is to get something on the books that complies with 8.1. And then when we bring that to the council, maybe as part of that discussion, because if we're going to try and incorporate it into the rules, it'll be part of a rules discussion. Yeah. Um, bring up the possibility of creating a new rule um, that mirrors or mimics 8.1, but applies to residents that are, you know, younger than 18 as well as over 18, you know, so it wouldn't have to be just those under 18 that sign it um, and see where the council stands on that. And if they want us to, if there's support for that within the council, and then we could come back to it in GOL if there is. George, I'm going to step away for a few minutes. I will be back to the meeting. Okay, fine. Andy, thank you. Um, we need to bring this to a close, but we're still, um, some comments or some issues that we haven't talked about yet um, in terms of the actual uh, notification <clears throat> time. And, you know, I'm not sure whether, you know, so um, the signers of the petition should also be provided with some, with the time and location of the next open meeting. And next notified about, I'm sorry. Or the next meeting of residents. And I'm not sure what that, you know, what that really entails. I mean, is it, in other words, it would be part of the rules and it would just state that this is, you know, it's our obligation to do this, um, which is obviously going to be a, a task for the staff. Um, why is it not sufficient that it be notified, that it be posted or publicly made knowledgeable in the usual ways? Why is it that each individual person who signed this needs to be reached out to? Um, once they achieve the goal of getting a public meeting, is it asking too much that they actually pay attention to when it uh, is going to be uh, scheduled? Sounds this like we're interesting yeah. question, and I and again I'm 
I've been trying to work in a supportive way for the petitioners and the um, school committee on how they move forward with this. Um, and I don't have a good answer to be blunt, um, but I think that <coughs> with every petition, there's usually someone or some group organizing. And I think it would be perfectly acceptable to ask that the organizers to make sure everybody is informed because they usually have the best email list. But I am certainly not, I don't have a stock answer here. I really don't. So, it could, it, you know, if you had 500 people so, sign a petition and you were saying you had to notify them all and you were going only by addresses, that's an expense. And somebody's got to take the, take the responsibility on of doing that. And who is going to take that responsibility on and yeah. um, so forth. So I, I, I just don't know what to say here. I'll come up with a couple options. My, my thinking's varied on this. Um, you know, if people go to the point of signing a petition like this and asking for a meeting, in one sense, yes, they should pay attention to when that is. But in another sense, we have to admit that not everyone knows how to figure that out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and direct notice to the people that actually were passionate enough to request this meeting themselves um, seems to make a lot of sense to me, despite the expense. Um, it could be a postcard, you know, at 20 some or quarter, 25 cents of a postcard, you know, it's not a huge expense. Um, there's a time, a time commitment to it. Um, but if we as a town are committed to um, public participation, it seems to make sense to notify people that requested a meeting that the meeting is happening and here's when it's happening and where. Um, you know, on, on another level, the way the um, charter deals with this for initiatives and um, voter veto petitions is to designate the first 10 quote signatures because they require signatures in, the, in those sections. I think it's the first 10, it might be the first 20 as the sort of petitioner group um, and they're the ones that continue to get noticed. So that's similar to what Lynn was saying on that side. So we, we might have a couple of options, but I don't like the option once Andy suggested it of no notification whatsoever. Um, well, it's not no notification, Mandy. It is the usual forms of notifying, which no, we follow. No direct notification. Right, no say. direct notification. And I, I guess- I don't like I'm, that option. Yeah, and I'm leaning against that both in terms of demand on staff time and the cost, and also the sense that, you know, citizenship does require at least a minimal level of engagement. And if you've taken the time to sign a petition, I don't think it's asking too much that you then seek out or find out. Uh, and there'll be many ways. You also have elect two elected representatives in your district. And um, so there are many ways in which you can find out what happened and what's going on. Um, and I'm just a little, I guess my concern is on staff time and, and expense, more staff time really, um, and also the expense um, when there are many avenues for people to to find out. And I think, you know, we, we should, you know, there's a certain level of expectation of, of involvement as well. Um, you know, if this is something that matters to you and we assume it does, um, it's not, it seems to be an unreasonable assumption that you would then make sure that you've become informed as to when this meeting will be held. And we're not hiding it. Um, it's publicly, we will announce it in all the various public forums that we do, and also the district representatives will, will be spreading it. Um, I just am concerned about adding this extra layer of cost and time, but that's a point I think we both have made, so maybe we can um, move on. Um, I think we've done as much as we can do here. Yeah, yeah, for the moment. Um, um, Bylaws for future consideration is the next. We're skipping item agenda number five, uh, uh, agenda item number six, actually, uh, time, town manager timeline. And we're going to agenda item number seven. And um, I have, uh, Mandy has uh, updated uh, her, uh, dis her work to this point. I've updated mine. Um, I think, Mandy, in terms of what you put in there, I think you're perfectly free to go ahead and begin to act on those where, you know, in other words, reach out to the town manager. 
Um, that's what I've done with my items. I've reached out, I haven't done all of them. I've done three of them, but I've reached out to Paul on the first three items that I was assigned to. And uh, so the legal review has been sent to the lawyer. Um, the uh, HR director um, has been sent a, a, a short memo uh, via Paul and I'm waiting to hear back from her. Um, and uh, I've been in touch with, the, uh, uh, with uh, Nate Malloy um, and through, through Paul to deal with the, the housing um, uh, housing uh, uh, forum issue or the, uh, um, so I guess all I want to say here is that that's in the, uh, the most updated version, which is probably not in your packet at the moment. Um, Mandy's comments were in there. I've just updated mine. Um, I'm encouraging Mandy to then move forward with what she um, has, if she can. Um, and to the rest of you, um, what I'd suggest is looking at the, and I will send it to you <clears throat> individually. I think it's probably, uh, and also put it in the uh, GOL folder, but <clears throat> look at the most recent updated version and see what you might be able to do in the next couple of weeks um, to, to move on your items, which in many cases involves just reaching out to Paul um, or you know what would be the action step. So Mandy and I have identified the action steps for our homework and we have um, initiate, well, I'm asking Mandy to now initiate the actions um, I've initiated three. I still have three more to work on because um, we do have March as our deadline. And uh, uh, so I don't know if people have any comments or thoughts on this other than me to encourage yeah, I you. Do. If I, so if I finally get to my review, do you want me to bring suggestion to the group before I take any action? Um, <clears throat> I think it would be good to do what Manny and I have done, which is sort of just state what you know the what the action is that that seems to be required for people to know about. Um, but I'm not sure that there would be any objection to people sort of just going ahead and doing what's obvious. Um, I don't know what the others think. Uh, I'm not really worried about anybody going off the reservation. What I'm worried about is uh, you know people having the time and the energy to just tackle their particular assignments so we can get this thing done by March. Um, so I guess, Lynn, the short answer is I think you should just go ahead and do what you think is appropriate. And just if you could enter that in the document so, you know, people can access the document and see what you're up to. Um, yeah. I don't know if we can put that. Yeah. Uh, if I'm looking for other people's thoughts on how to move, I'll bring it to the group. Okay. And I will, I will do many of the actions that are referred to the town manager for town attorney review and stuff like that that are in my section. Right. I'll do um, that over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, just, just pick away at it. I still have three I have to work on. And of course, we're then we're waiting to hear back from Paul or from the town attorney or from the HR director or from, you know, <clears throat> it's gonna take time, but we need to push Two of my three involved Dave Zomack. I have reached out to him twice yep. in fair detail and sent the document to Good. him so that Good. he could look at it and he has not responded to me so i need to ratchet that up as best i can right uh, there was a third section that i think requires some drafting and probably has to ultimately go back to town council but i can attempt to do the draft on it um but uh, the ones with somac had to do with either the Agricultural Commission right. or the Conservation Commission. And uh, those are both um, bodies that he is involved with. And uh, so I think, uh, you know, I, I just really need to ratchet up the pressure on him. And I'm wondering if, if this is something, again, help me with the, just the open meeting law and all the, the things that, that I struggle to understand. Maybe given the nature of this assignment, can the chair work individually with each member and just sort of you know checking up on where they're at and instead of taking up council uh, our time as we're doing I, now? I didn't hear you ask that question. Um, can I reach out to in, you I, individually? No, George, I didn't oh. hear you ask that question. Uh oh, so I should shut up. Yeah. Okay. I just, uh, I just lost my voice. Okay, oh, sorry. All right. So, Andy, thank you. Um, the uh, I have a question for the bylaw review committee, um, and that's Pat and Evan. 
and I will reach out to them um, in terms of, because I have some things, that, when I look at my document, there's some comments from the bylaw review committee that I don't understand. So I'm gonna just, that'll be my job. Okay, so keep on keeping on. It'll be on the agenda every meeting and I will be harassing you um, as much as I humanly can. Um, adoption of minutes. As people, if people haven't had a chance to read it, if they're not comfortable, we can put this off to the next meeting. I've read them, I'm happy with them. They're fine. Okay, so if people are willing to go ahead, I will entertain a motion to accept uh, the uh, minutes for, I don't even have the date in front of me, I'm sorry. Anyone have the date in front of me, the minutes? <laughs> uh, for January 6, 2021, so Thank moved. You. Yes, so moved, is there a second? Second, DeAngelis. Okay, any discussion? Any, okay, so I'm gonna to go immediately to a vote. The chair is a yes, Mandy? Yes. Lynn? Yes. Matt? Yes. Mandy? Abstain. Abstain, so the vote is four in favor, none against one abstention to adopt the minutes for January 6th. I'm losing it, okay. Items not anticipated. We have before us a resolution. Um, and Bring it Lynn, up now. Put that up, thank you, Lynn. Um, I would like us to take a look at it. We have about 15 minutes. Yeah, George. Um, yep, Pat. I have, uh, I read carefully the uh, what came from Paul and I haven't had a chance to talk to Mandy but I have a couple of changes that I would suggest. Okay, so let us get this document up in front of us. And um, you have some changes you wish to make. Do you want to start? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, uh, a very minor one uh, under the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh, whereas, uh, sixth, whereas it should be President Donald J. Trump. That's very minor. Uh, but the next one, well, let's let's make them each one of them. So if, if Lynn, okay, sorry, a chance right to make here. Them, um, yeah, it should. Yeah, it has a D. I'm, huh? It says okay. Donald J. Trump. What I printed out doesn't. Okay. Okay, so that's right. fine. I think she's trying to get rid of the comma, maybe. Oh. No. Yeah. It should no. be. Sure. It's the comma. Donald Trump, comma, right? Get get rid of the comma. I have worked from a different version of the document. I apologize, right. but I, I still will go with some of the things. Um, and the next one is known in advance. I, uh, I'm going to have to. Um, I'm gonna to have to sit out. I completely worked on a different document, except for the be it further resolved at the end, the second one. Yep. Uh, it seems to me that um, given that we, we should eliminate number two about the employees who were sworn to uphold the law because uh, according to, it seems, although there's not been a lawyer's uh, definite thing, that we don't have the right um, to get that information or it would be complicated to get that. And we're talking here only not about people who attended the demonstration, but the people who participated in the actual attack on the Capitol. Um, right. But I don't think, I guess if you're a police officer in, in Amherst and you participated in that and you're caught, I guess we could do something. Uh, but I don't think we can do something in advance. So you are suggesting that we, that the Remote item two to. be stricken. Yeah, Mandy, can you respond? Cause I haven't had a chance to talk to you, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'm not gonna contest it. Um, we tried to write it so that it wasn't asking about attendance at the protests. It was asking about right. people who actually violated the law. Um, right. It, it might be better to just strike it than to go through a debate on it, um, on whether it's actionable or not. Um, I, I think I would want to make clear, and maybe it's not in the resolution, but when we talk about it on Monday at the council meeting, um, that we as a town should not accept um, 
or employ people who in 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 um in positions where they've sworn to uphold the laws of the constitution who then go and try to um violate those exact laws um that that is a problem to create trust in our town but i i guess i will not contest deleting that section um from this be it further resolved thanks Finn. So, so far the only change, uh, we have a comma removed from one section and we have deletion of item two in that whereas clause, or sorry, in that be it resolved clause. Are there any other changes that either the sponsors or um, members of the committee wanna make in terms of just uh, the language? I have one more about in the same, be it further resolved. Uh, Paul made the comment that we were um, <laughs> that we were calling on ourselves. Um, yes, uh, that I had this, yeah, good. I, <laughs> in other words, municipal leaders, it's not clear who, who, yes, we're basically, yeah. So what, what do you want to suggest? Well, go ahead, Mandy. The were... intent was um, the town manager and the department heads, right. I believe. Right, and because we in the paragraph beforehand condemn the town council, the paragraph beforehand has the town council condemning right. the actions. There's another point though, and that is that um, Paul and uh, Superintendent Morris uh, did that very quickly. So we're calling right. on them to do something that they already did. And I find that very uncomfortable, which yeah. is not really clear I guess my, an my actionable concern, question I took, but it is a problem I have. My my concern is that our police chief, whose own employees and who himself has taken an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States and the laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, has not condemned it in public. Well. I mean, we could call that one out, but the enact practices is more than just police practices. Right. Policy behavior. Well, I am trying to walk the usual fine line between uh, content and clarity. In this case, it's clarity um, and also actionability to some extent. Um, as Andy points out, this has already been done by two of our quote unquote municipal leaders. Um, is this document asking all department heads and because uh, the town manager already stated um, his uh, position on this as has the school superintendent. So just from the point of view of clarity and actionability, um, who exactly are is this addressed to and what exactly are they supposed to do? Um, that's, but George, that's if they've that's already that. done it, then they've already um, participated in what this uh, resolution is asking. We're not asking them to do it again, but I think to carve out, um, to, I mean, they, they wrote a resolution which included the pl chief police after George Floyd was killed. Well, they, it was powerful right, they and moving. Public, they, yeah, they issued a public And yet we had another resolution right. condemning the same action. And we are calling on municipal leaders uh, and they've done it. The town manager and the um, school superintendent have done it, but we haven't heard from other municipal uh, leaders. But and the, the, the town manager oversees yes, yes. all the other municipal leaders or- well, Yeah, I have a problem because I don't, I can't support this as being actionable without legal opinion because I'm not sure the charter allows us to do this. In, in Call on it? people to do that. The charter, the, relies, the charter relies on the town manager to employ and set the rules and uh, for the um, people that he hires. And I don't think that we can infringe upon his responsibilities with, um, in I, therefore, without um, a legal opinion that says we can, I think it's not actionable. Both one and two now, or only part of that? 
uh, calling on our municipal leaders. So the whole, be it further resolved. Yeah, yeah that, whole, that um, whole section. The whole thing. So can I ask Andy, um, we just as a town council directed the manager to bring forth bylaw re revisions. Um, how is this different? Well, The, but, but the but the way I'm hearing this is you want individual people who do not report to us to take make these statements, and and what I'm hearing from Andy is they don't report to us. The only one that reports to us is Paul. So if we change it to call on the town manager to, already done it. I know, but. And two is important. And two affects the council as well, because we're the people who enact practices and policies. Um, well, I think my concern about two is, is not a matter of GOL. So I'm not going to speak on that, but I do think we have a question of just clarity and actionability okay. related to municipal leaders. I take it you're not asking Guilford to issue a statement. You're not asking Dave Zomek to issue a statement. Um, I really do want to get clear on who you actually are asking. It seems you have a fixation on the chief of police. And so maybe you want to put his put that particular individual in here. Um, but then it runs into the question of does he does, you know. So um, I prefer that it just be calling the town manager to one and two. That um, seems clear and seems actionable. Um, he's already done one, that's fine. Two, uh, uh, we'll discuss in council. But if you want to have others picked out, I think you need to actually name them. Yeah. I, I've, and I, I would strongly urge you not to do that, but that's this that gets beyond the level of, of GOI. I think that what the, I think by naming anybody beyond the town manager, we get into whether or not this is actionable by the town council. We're yep. Pat. I'm I'm trying to figure this out, so I apologize. I feel like we call on the town manager and the leaders of, of public safety, because we're, you know, I think the fire chief and the police chief should be condemning the actions of these insurrectionists, whether I can force them to do that or not. Um, but we are asking the police chief, the police department uh, to enact practices and behavior and policies to ensure. And I think they've already done that in Amherst. I think if I go back to some of the Black Lives Matter demonstrations that happened, there was no police presence. So are we, but I, I feel like it, it's a policy statement that's important, um, or it's a request that's important. So again, I guess the question from GOL is this, do the sponsors wish to change um, the language beyond what we have now? We have, we call on the town manager, and then we have item one. We have stricken item two, and now item three becomes item two. Um, are they satisfied with that language or do they wish to change it? I can reluctantly live with it for now. I don't know what I might do at the council meeting. No, absolutely. I understand that this is just yeah. a matter of GOL clarity, consistency, and actionability. Yep. The issue of clarity and actionability has been raised. Um, the sponsors have heard it. Um, it is their document, ultimately. Um, and it will be discussed in the council. Um, I hope it won't take up a huge amount of time, but it will be discussed. Um, so any other changes people wish to make? I saw nothing else. I missed the comma. I thought and considering its source, it was very well written. Um, it's, it's in the proper format. Um, you've addressed the one concern I had about actionability and clarity. Um, any other concerns from members of the committee? Any other comments from the members of the committee? Then I'm prepared to entertain a motion to declare this uh, resolution, the 2021 resolution condemning the January 6, 2021 insurrection 
uh, to be clear, consistent, as and accurate. As amended at, the, at this meeting. As well, amended. Thank you. As, as, amended, amended, as amended. amended at this meeting. Thank you, Andy. That is correct. So I'm prepared to entertain that motion. I'll move it. Mandy has moved it. Is there a second? Second. All right, Lynn has seconded. Any further discussion, comments, concerns? Otherwise, I'm moving directly to a vote. Um, I see no hands raised. So, uh, Andy, I'm gonna start with you. Yes. Lynn? Yes. The chair is a yes. Pat? Yes. Andy Joe? Yes. All right, so this is um, declared clear, consistent, actionable by a unanimous vote five to zero. Um, I think we might make it. Thank you all for helping. Um, Can I say something quickly? Uh, I'm sorry, we're out of time, folks. I, <laughs> um, I want to apologize to the committee for sounding so angry. No, shut, shut up, George. For sounding so angry when I was talking about age-related stuff. I, yep. My mute button was on because the phone had started ringing and I didn't know it was on and I kept trying to talk and everybody was talking over me. So I got very frustrated and that wow. came to my voice. Uh, and then I saw my error, corrected it, uh, and I was able to speak. So I do want to apologize for the tone of my voice. Well, the apology is appreciated and accepted, but Pat, I should have seen that you were muted. Um, uh, for instance, right now I can see that Mandy is muted and I wasn't paying attention. I would have pointed it out to you. I'm sorry, I should have seen that. No um, all right, so a future agenda items. Uh, the list is getting longer and longer. Yeah, we have <laughs> resolution. Uh, we, um, very important one. I'm sorry, Lynn. We have a resolution coming I've already told you about. It's not, I don't have it yet. Right. I'm sorry, what? I didn't hear you. You, you don't we have, have a resolution coming regarding Chinese New Year. Yeah, but it's on the list. Chinese New Year's yeah. here. I've already got it. Time manager timeline is on here. Biomass res resolution. Oh, yeah. Um, a little comment on that. Um, it, it, you know, these come to me and then I don't hear from any, you know, so the sponsors don't reach out to me, blah, blah, blah. And then they reach out and say, are you going to consider it at this meeting? So it, I, I don't know. I just it. got asked the other day uh, to be a sponsor. So sometimes the sponsors are not the pre people who are driving it. I mean, I, I, so right. I, I apologize. I will try to remember well, to do that. Anyway, I, them, yeah. I will try to be more systematic. I have CC'd you on most of the people who said they sponsored. There no, are you, you both did fine. It's just that then the sponsors don't reach out to me and you know, I, you know, so. Okay, right. I hear you. Anyway. I'm gonna I mean, stop know what's going on, They can come to the meeting, but I will always notify a sponsor if their uh, resolution is going to be discussed. And so I didn't reach out. Well, I only knew of one name actually. Hey, it's your fault. Well, it usually is in the end, I've learned that. Uh, what I learned in teaching, whenever things went wrong, in the end, and this is a very painful discovery, it was my fault. So there you go. That's my word of wisdom for today. Election of chair and vice chair. We will be dealing with that at the start, I assume, of the meeting next time. We no, you're just going to be the chair again. Uh, <laughs> I didn't say that, and I didn't endorse that. That message was not endorsed by me, um, but. We will be doing that. We may have a new face or two. So, um, but there I'm, may only be one nomination for chair. <laughs> all I'm telling you is there will be on the agenda election of chair and vice chair. <laughs> so be careful what you uh, say. Um, Chinese New Year. Uh, we're going to deal with rule of procedure 2.1 election of officers. Mandy is bravely. I'll have language. Work on it. and again, if you don't have time for well, you know, but I'm, I'm put that's on it for the moment. Who can sponsor a bylaw? Um, I'll I'll come up with something. Yeah, and you and I should talk so that yeah. maybe I can help you with some of this stuff. Um, anything else? Um, we've got a whole list of things earlier, but I'm going to have to go through that and decide if we have time at all for any of that yet. But is there anything specific people definitely want to deal with, other than those one, two, three, four, five, six items? Well, if you do, let me know uh, in advance, but otherwise I'm prepared to declare this meeting 
public okay. comment just mentioned that there's oh, no thank you public. sorry i i uh, looked earlier i don't see any public present um anyone see i don't see public present no nope. so there is no need for public comment but thank you manny for reminding me um therefore we're done see ya yeah Bye. take care everybody <laughs>